We're going to look at a few ways to measure uh, local fluid velocity. So we have you know, probably the fluid meter section. Um, there aren't too many, there are many, many things you can measure a fluid, of course, density, pressure. We've talked about a little bit using manometers and pressure gauges. Um, but velocity is certainly the one that uh, is in some ways the hardest um, because you really have, it's hard to do it without disturbing the flow. So when as soon as you try to measure the velocity, in many cases, you change the velocity. Uh, one example of this, of course, we've already looked at is the pitot tube. Um, so the pitot tube, uh, which relies on the Bernoulli effect, uh, we align this thin probe. Imagine this is quite thin, as thin as you can make it. Uh, align it in, with the flow direction. The velocity coming in will enter this channel 1. Uh, and this channel 1, of course, there's no flow. The, the flow can't go anywhere. It's stuck. Uh, so the velocity goes from whatever it was out here in the mainstream to 0. And that causes a significant pressure change. So P1 here will be higher due to the dynamic pressure. And then velocity 2 up here is the flow passing over these holes. And the anemometer, sorry, the pitot tube will typically have you know, 4 to 8 holes uh, separated 8 diameters back from the entrance. And those holes will be uh, measuring the static pressure. So that will be the pressure 2 here. Uh, it's, it's been found that if the Reynolds number of the flow is based on the diameter is greater than about a thousand, that uh, this will be relatively good method. So the friction effects will be relatively negligible. Sorry, negligible. And Pito will be accurate. So that's um, nice. So we have a little, you know, a little rule of thumb here for when you can use a pitot tube. If the Reynolds number is less than a thousand, of course, you're going to have all kinds of frictional slowing of the flow along the surface. Uh, of course, this is the ratio of inertial effects uh, to friction effects. So the high high ratio here means that you know inertial effects are dominant, and the friction effects are relatively small compared to that. So we can uh, measure that pressure difference. Of course, the Bernoulli equation tells us what that will yield. P1 over rho uh, plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 has got to equal, if we neglect friction, P2 over rho plus V2 squared over 2 plus GZ2. Um, so that's uh, easy to solve. V1, we just said, was going to go to 0 because that's the velocity that goes in this, into this tube. So that goes to 0. Uh, and, of course, Z1 we're going to think is approximately equal to Z2. Uh, we said that this is a thin, a thin probe, uh, so those two terms are just going to cancel each other out. V1 just went away, and so we have the P1 uh, minus P2 over the density of the fluid, and there's only one density because it's incompressible flow, uh, we assume, is equal to uh, V2 squared over 2, and that leads to the equation that you already know, that you can calculate the velocity of the flow. It's the square root of 2 times this pressure difference, P1 minus P2, divided by the density. So that's, a, that's the way you would find you know, V2, and V2, of course, represents the free stream velocity. So the velocity in the flow is equal to that very simple equation. You're measuring that delta P right here with your pressure gauge. Um, so a simple device uh, that works, but the problem with the pitot tube, as we mentioned before, is it's very, very sensitive to the angle of approach of the liquid, um, so this really has to be aligned perfectly in the direction of flow in order to get an accurate reading. Uh, flows sometimes are moving and swirling and, you know, not going in one direction. So you have to, in theory, you have to move the pitot tube all over the place to try to capture that effect. That's not practical. In addition, even if you kind of know the direction of the flow, assuming it's the flow of something that you don't, can't see very well, like air or clear water, uh, you don't really know what the direction of the flow is, so you could try orienting in different directions to try to zoom in on what's the essentially the highest pressure reading you would see is the difference would be the correct direction. Uh, but again, if the flow is changing direction at all, uh, you would never really know that. So you wouldn't know if the flow is changing velocity or changing direction. So there's some real limitations of the pitot tube in spite of its being a pretty, pretty cool mathematical idea and a functional one if you do happen to know the direction of the flow. Another type of sensor that's very pos very popular, and you see them a lot, are rotary sensors. So you've surely all seen these in various places. Classic cup sensor. So you have, you know, say a cup on both sides of this, 
and you know this is an axle and so the thing is going to spin this one will spin this way the wind is going to blow it doesn't matter which direction the wind is blowing it's going to the a open cup will have greater drag than the closed cup you know this now remember this is going to be result the effect of the drag coefficient so the drag coefficient for a cup facing behind backwards if the, say the wind is going this way is going to be a lot less than the drag coefficient for a cup that's open like this. So that's going to cause a differential force. It's going to spin the rotor. It doesn't matter if the wind is blowing any, any direction, the rotor will spin the same way. So all you need to do is calibrate uh, the, rot the, the speed of rotation with the flow velocity, and you have a way of measuring flow velocity. This is very popular for wind. Uh, you know, weather, weather stations use this because it is completely insensitive to the direction. So if you're only interested in wind speed and you're not interested in direction, this is a good technique. Another version of this same idea uses just curved uh, kind of curved plates. So you could do something like this. Same exact effect. You have you know, the flow coming this way. This one's going to catch it and go that way. This will have a higher drag coefficient than this. Uh, and so you'll have the spinning no matter which direction it goes. The downside of this rotary sensor, of course, is A, they tend to be rather large. I mean, you can make them as small as you can, um, but they're not going to be tiny. They're not really measuring the velocity at a point. They're measuring the velocity at two points, at the very least, the differential between these two points as the differential pressure at these two points is causing the difference here. Of course, it's the dynamic pressure is the drags. So, um, that's going to, you know, not measure the velocity at a particular point. Uh, certainly, they disturb the flow. I mean, you put an object in the flow, so there are many applications where you simply wouldn't want to stick something like this in the flow. Um, and they can't tell, as a, they can't tell what direction the flow is coming from. Uh, that's that can be a problem depending on the type of flow you're you're interested in as well. Uh, another type of flow meter that's very similar is a propeller. So you can stick a a propeller into the flow. I'll just try to draw a propeller here, sort of. Um, so we have something that looks maybe like this a little bit. Uh, and, you know, the flow goes through there and the thing's going to spin as I've drawn it. It's you know, probably going to spin this way. Um, this can tell direction of flow. These will reverse direction if the flow goes back the other way. Uh, once again, it's pretty large. I mean, you can make pretty small propellers. And I've seen flow meters like this that are pretty darn tiny. So you can, you can make these small. I mean, you can make them like this. Uh, I've not seen any, you know, much smaller than that. Um, but you can make reasonably small ones, but you are disturbing the flow. You're sticking something in the flow. It does measure, uh, it does measure reverse back flow going backwards or forward. So that's good. It is slightly uh, dependent on direction. However, the flow going straight through the repeller is going to be very different than flow maybe coming in at an angle. Uh, so that's going to be potentially a problem as well. Um, so, you know, again, imperfect, but some applications, this is, this is a good, a good technique. Uh, so we'll, see if there are some, some better ones uh, in the next lecture.